like to speak to you for just a minute on something I call the aha effect in economics. Now, the aha effect occurs in all fields of study. Aha, okay? Aha, eureka, wow, okay? That's the moment at which you understand something. It becomes clear. And, of course, when we understand something, we tend to appreciate or enjoy it more. And there's a phenomenon that happens in economics, and I'm sure across various other, all, all fields of study to a degree, but I see it in the economics classroom all the time. I want to describe that to you for just a minute, and I want you to keep it in mind, particularly as you study for your first exam. Here's what happens, at least in my experience. You come into class the first day, and you talk about economics in generalities. What is economics? And again, I make it simple, I think. I say econo economics is the study of what are you going to do with what you got. It's the study of how people make decisions, how companies or businesses make decisions. It's the study uh, on a larger scale of economies and nations and the problems or challenges they face with respect to creating jobs for everybody, for keeping prices under control, for seeing their economy grow steadily and, and comfortably. Economics is a study of what's going on, what's going on in your life, our lives, and our larger lives, if you will, collectively. Economics to me is fascinating. And we talk about economics the first day, and usually folks find something in that conversation they get interested in. And we keep it at a pretty simple level the first day, because we don't want to scare anybody away. And by the first day of class, a lot of folks come out of class saying, literally, saying to me, you know, I was kind of, kind of afraid of economics. I heard it was really difficult. I heard it was really boring. I really wasn't looking forward to this class. But this is sounding pretty interesting. I think this might be a good class. And so their level of understanding and enjoyment on day one, on my scale here, okay, day one, here's the first day, they're up here near the maximum, 100, 100% enjoyment and understanding. They're saying, this is great. I think I'm going to have a good time in this class. Well, that's great. I like, I like to see them create a positive attitude. I like, to, like them to look forward to coming back to the next class and, you know, hearing what we're going to talk about. But guess what happens the second day? By the second day, they've had some homework to do, some questions to solve, some problems to solve, and they've run into some difficulties. Because the concepts in economics are, are really fairly straightforward and they're really pretty simple once you understand them. But trying to get your head around them and, and understand the concepts and apply them to different problems, that's a challenge. And so by the second day of class, a lot of students come to class and they're, they're saying that my level of understanding and therefore my level of, of enjoyment in this class just really took a nose drive because a nose dive, I don't know how to do this problem. And so here's what happens. By the second day, they're down here around a four out of a hundred in their level of enjoying this class. And they're not happy. They're saying, I don't understand this. It's like it's written in another language. You say this, but it means that. You know, there's, there's the demand for something, and it's not the same as the quantity demanded. And when the demand curve moves, you tell me the quantity supplied moves, and the terminology is driving me crazy. I can't understand these questions. And so I tell them, look, come on, we're going to work through this together. And if you're smart, you're going to get with three or four other people, create a study group, and you're going to help each other solve and therefore learn how to work these problems, okay? And so they start on it. And so the first week or two, here's what happens. They work on the problems. They work on the problems. And it doesn't get a whole lot better. But they're still, the ones who are dedicated, they're still struggling. They're saying, I can do this. And at some point, here's what happens. At some point, they hit a question or a problem set, and they go, wow, I understand this. I got it right. And that's when clarity is beginning to, to become, you know, part of their understanding. They say, oh, I see it. That's it. Aha. Okay. But unfortunately, in economics, it doesn't happen all the time at one time. Instead, they go to the next problem, and it's a little bit different, or it's got a new term in it, and they go back down here. They go, darn, I don't understand this one now. And so they're working down here, working on some more problems, working with their group. Maybe they're sending me questions on email or on the discussion forum. And then suddenly they hit another one and they go, wow, now I see it. I got this one right. And their level of enjoyment goes up even higher. 
And they're saying, man, I'm, I'm starting to nail this stuff now. I've really got it. Until they go to the next question. At which time they drop back down here. Because it's slightly new, slightly different, new concept, new term. And they're struggling, and they're struggling, and they're struggling. And then what happens? You know the, the rest of it, right? Suddenly they go, whoa, I got that one right. And they're making progress. They truly are. But then they confront a new issue or a new concept. And back down here. And so you see this repeated series of illumination, if you will, each one getting a little bit higher than the one before, until one day, and I'm, I'm thinking in terms of just the topic of supply and demand and markets and price ceilings and price floors, one day they begin to realize that all these questions have a great deal in common. And if you understand the concepts, know how to use the tools, you can solve any question. And that's where they go from here to here. That is the aha moment that occurs in economics. It has some peaks and some troughs on the way, some high points and low points. But the only way you get from this low point down here to up here is spending the time studying. Recognize you're going to have the drop-offs. You're going to have times when it's frustrating and not, and not clear. That's when we see what you're made of. That's when you get to see what you're made of. Are you determined enough? Are you creative enough to work with others and find solutions? Because at some point, this will happen. Now, maybe it'll be the second time you take the course, but let's hope not, right? But it will happen. Unfortunately, too many people kid themselves along the way. And they think that was the aha moment even though they know deep down there's still some stuff they haven't quite understood. And they come in and take the first exam about this point in time when their performance is abysmally low because they have an incomplete understanding. They have not truly mastered the material. If you do not put in enough time out to here, if you don't put in the time and the quality effort it takes to get to the aha moment, You'll become very, very frustrated. But it is a function of you applying yourself over and over and over again to get to that aha moment. If I give you a set of questions, I don't know, 15, 20 multiple choice questions, and say, here's some samples, and you work through them, and you think you've got them pretty good, the next thing to do is to split them up with some folks and rewrite the questions so they're a little different. And then see if you can solve those and come to some... Uh, agreement on what is the correct answer. It's to take the textbook and the PowerPoints that may come with the textbook. It's to take any other materials you can find. It's to go find old exams, old textbooks, and find more and more and more examples so you can spend the time and go through that repeated cycle of understanding so you finally get to the aha moment. Now, for those of you from the southern part of the United States, we have a different term for that. It's when you, you're studying something really hard and you're not quite sure what it means and you're focusing on it. And you can see, I see it in kids' eyes all the time. They're, oh. Well, down south, folks call this not aha. They look at it and they go, well, damn. And they're right. They just got it. <laughs>